the contribution of the ice sheet to sea level rise can be broken down into two primary processes. The first one being what is called dynamic ice loss, which is the uh, sort of the familiar picture of a iceberg calving off of a glacier front. And the second process is the meltwater. That's water that's generated on the ice sheet as the ice sheet melts, and that water has to flow into the ocean. What the climate models are indicating and observations are also indicating that the meltwater component could possibly outweigh the dynamical ice loss component. So looking towards the future, there's an interest in understanding the, the, the processes where meltwater is transported to the ocean. About 30 minutes by air to the east of Kangerlussuaq, Greenland, in the melt zone of the Great Ice Sheet, a group of researchers are taking the closest look yet at a quiet but critical process. To measure water on the ice sheet, our group uses an instrument called an acoustic Doppler current profiler. And uh, it's this little cone-shaped instrument that we put on, uh, we put on the bottom of, it looks like a boogie board, we strap it in the middle of a boogie board, it sits just below um, the surface of the water and it tells us uh, how quickly the water is moving and it tells us the depth of the water across the channel. All this meltwater is generated throughout the catchment and you can see all the way up there and it flows and accumulates in a number of rivers, makes it through this river and then flows into a giant muon down there which enters the ice sheet. We can use satellites to, to map rivers um, on the surface of the ice sheet and rivers that are, that are draining the ice sheet and the uh, the satellite measurements um, in, in concert with our field measurements, or uh, when compared with our field measurements, can uh, help make them more, more general. You can look at certain characteristics from satellite images, like, like width of a river, and we know that um, you know, widths tend to vary. You know, if, if, the water, if a river is wider, we generally can assume that there's more water flowing through it. So you can look at different, different characteristics that you can measure from satellite images and can compare those characteristics or validate those characteristics with the measurements you make in the field. Okay, so behind us we have a Hyrolean traverse system. And so that's being used to operate a, what we call a hydro board. It's a board with the acoustic Doppler current profiler. That's telling us how deep the water is, how fast it's moving, and what the cross-sectional area of the channel is. So with all those three parameters combined, we can um, tell you, it tells us exactly the volume of water passing by us each second which at this current moment is about 10 cubic meters per second. So when we measured it this morning, um, it was about five <laughs> cubic meters per second. That was at 11 a.m. And so now, you know, a few hours later, we've doubled that flow. So the depth's increasing, the velocity's increasing. And this will probably peak around 10 p.m. tonight and um, then make its way down to the lowest point early in the morning. The, uh, the flow in this river is uh, very actively moving, as you can see, and what we'll learn, we will learn at the end of this project is to what extent the current generation of climate models that are being used to predict future level rise, uh, how correctly or not they're estimating the runoff of this meltwater to the global ocean. This, this kind of work uh, requires the utmost attention to, to detail in particular uh, to safety, because uh, while it could be extremely dangerous, if not done carefully, it actually is quite safe if the proper precautions are, are made. So uh, the important thing here is, to, um, is that we have um, really taken our time by setting up a camp like this with comfortable facilities and, and uh, amenities that allows us to stay for a long time to really uh, make sure that all the safety precautions are in place to do this kind of work uh, in a way that's as safe as possible. Significant sea level rise from ice sheet melt is already inevitable. The answers that Dr. Smith and his team find will help better understand how soon and how severely that rise will affect all of mankind.